Okay, well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to talk at this presentation. Um, it's all, it's kind of, well, I noticed as soon as we start here, I seem to be extremely junior at this, when you only have two titles as opposed to a whole list of uh, potential institutions. So, um, so I am fairly junior, I think, compared to most speakers. Um, and uh, so I am a physicist by trade, but have now been in the bioinformatics arena for the last sort of seven years, probably. Um, and as mentioned, we used to be at Boston College, moved out here to the University of Utah. Um, so uh, we have an academic project, which is still ongoing here at the university, and we now have a startup company, uh, and that is based um, in, in Boston. So I'm going to talk briefly about what our project is, which is IOBio, um, but I'm not going to spend too much time on this. We're then going to move on to some of the experiences that we have had in trying to commercialize this. Um, and we're very early on in the process, and I think I'll be kind of reiterating some of the points that uh, have already been mentioned in some of these presentations. But I think, you know, it, it probably doesn't hear, hurt to hear the same thing over and over again if, uh, if it's of value. Okay, so what we're developing is essentially a, a platform in order to improve genomic analysis. And sort of our, our idea here is that the way things seem to work right now is that there's kind of a, a silo of people called bioinformaticians who are very good uh, at using computational tools. They know, you know, what is the state of the art in the field. They're able to download, compile, and operate tools sort of on a Unix command line, uh, which is, you know, is very good for informaticians, but oftentimes we find that the people that really need to do analysis of genetic data are those who actually work with families that have genetic diseases. Um, and, you know, so it's sort of medical professionals, genetic counselors, MDs. You know, they understand the genetics. They understand the clinical presentations in the patients that they have. And they understand, you know, genetics. They understand essentially what genes do, whether they're likely to be involved in, in the disorder that's under study. Bioinformaticians, on the other hand, not necessarily um, experts in that field. And so what ends up happening is we have these two groups that have to talk to each other. Uh, sometimes that can be difficult. So what we find is, you know, I have kind of three little pictures here, which are things that we're trying to resolve with our platform. So first of all, we have the fact that a lot of data, you know, there's a huge amount of ge genomic data being generated nowadays, and they tend to sit in all sorts of different places. So people will have data sat on their own laptop, people have data sat up in a cloud, or on institutional hardware, like down on the CHPC here at Utah. And so if you have data sat in different locations, how can you access that data in an easy way if you're not necessarily comp computationally savvy? And how do you analyze all this data together? So this is one aspect where we're trying to work to make this easy by making web-based applications that let you hit data where it sits. The second sort of innovation of the tool is that the way that data analysis occurs is typically these long-running processes. I set off an analysis, it might take hours or days to finish, and then I get you know, a static image, a, PhD, uh, sorry, a PDF file or some text file, and I have to interpret those results. Maybe decide some of the parameters I used were not optimum, and I restart the whole thing again, wait another few days and look at the analysis. And that's not necessarily a very good way of doing analysis. So our process here is to essentially do uh, just look at small pieces of data, either sample data or look in a small region, like in a gene. Do very quick analysis, generate some very uh, intuitive and nice-looking visuals so that you know, we can try and get everybody to understand those results. And then they can tweak parameters, and because it's in real time, we can generate new answers really quickly. And so you know, we, we generate these visual visualizations, we look at them, we make a decision, we change parameters, we get instant gratification. So we're hoping this really empowers people to look at their data and sort of bring the human eye to bear on some of these problems and help solve uh, some issues. OK, what did I press? Oh, there we go. OK, so the way that we envision this being useful sort of in a clinical setting is we have a number of different applications that are built on this platform. So we're going to begin by saying, we've just generated all of this data. Before we do any analysis, can we make sure that the data is actually good? And so we have a number of applications. These are just sort of representative, showing distributions of data so that we can try and get a very quick idea is this data good? Should we proceed to the next step of the analysis? 
And then this bottom image is one of our tools which essentially looks at a family trio of whole genome sequencing, mum and dad and proband. And we're asking, are there any, um, any mutations in this child that we've seen before that are associated with this disease or look like they may have some significant impact on protein function or anything like that? Um, and so the hope is that we can get this into the hands of medical professionals. They can do analysis themselves and hopefully aid the clinical discovery process, uh, speed up analysis and help diagnosis. And so that's our goal. And so here's some of the things that we've found out along the way. And as I mentioned, we're, we're an early company. So we have uh, academic funding through the NIH for the academic project. Now we have a commercial operation and we've already secured a couple of uh, STTR, small business grants from the NIH. Um, and we're now in the process of going through what's called the i program. Now this is an NIH NSF run program, but it's also something that the TVC and USTAR are both looking at having their own versions of this program. And I strongly recommend that anybody who's looking to be involved in commercialization looks at these programs. Um, we're actually in the middle of this right now, and so um, in the last presentation, it's kind of good to see the idea that you have to go out and talk to somebody and find out whether what you're doing is actually any good. Well, what we're finding out is you can't just go and talk to one person or two people and find out if what you're doing is any good. You need to talk to a whole lot of people. And so we're in a process right now that is to say, we have this product and we think it's fantastic and we think we're going to go and show it to anybody and they're going to see the potential of this and they're going to be on board right away and they're not. And so what you need to do is find out, well, we've developed a product that we think is cool but it's not necessarily the problem that everybody is facing. What you really need is a product that actually solves a problem that people have. So the, the whole sort of premise of this program that we're on right now is go out and find out what the problems are. What is it that people are struggling with and then make your product tailored towards those problems. That doesn't I mean, this doesn't mean you have to go out and develop a whole new product. It just means that you need to focus your product where it's most useful. And you know, without doing that, that's where you, your product is gonna fall down. I mean, this is super obvious, and I kind of think everything we've done so far through you know, trying to get to commercialization is really obvious, but we've not necessarily thought about these things in as much detail as we should have done. So in order to make something work, you need to pay for it. We, we are certainly not short of ideas, and I think this is probably true of every academic lab. Full of ideas, you could probably employ 100 people right now to try and work on all these cool ideas that you have, but you can't do that because you don't have the resources to do that. And so, you know, an obvious source of funding, which is where the majority of our effort has gone at this point, is the NIH. And so, you know, we already have two phase one uh, STTR grants, but there's a lot of lag in these grants. You know, when you apply, you don't see money appear in your bank account for quite some time. So if you're really wanting to press ahead with commercialization, grants are fantastic, but you kind of have to be planning on a, you know, a year from now basis in order to make this work. So one of the things that I think has been a real lesson from our point of view is actually take the time to go out and talk to the resources that you have here in Utah and find out what the options are for funding. NIH is obvious, but there is a lot of other opportunities out there. And in particular, if you talk to TVC and USTAR, there's a lot of different methods of getting funding out there that aren't necessarily obvious. And you know, I certainly didn't know about a lot of these, and we've set our company up in Boston. That's probably unusual for a lot of the companies here. And by doing that, we've actually cut ourselves out of some of the funding that's available through Utah grants. And maybe if we'd known that prior to making decisions right at the beginning of the process, we might have set things up slightly different. Um, and then we would have access to a number of different funding sources. So really, that's kind of my key message from everything that we've done so far. It's who you know and what you know that's really gonna help this process move forwards. In particular, the TVC and USTAR 
for us have been incredibly useful resources. And they, if you talk to them and set up relationships with people within these organizations, this is going to be paid back to you a hundredfold. There's a number of different courses that we're actually on right now that are not necessarily run by TVC or USTAR, but we would never have known about them had we not got the contacts who were constantly talking to us and telling us, oh, by the way, have you looked at this? The NIH runs a niche assessment program that will take your product and do a market analysis for you. I would never have known, but I have people at the TVC who tell me, and then we apply to them and then we get them, and this is helping us push, push everything forwards. Um, getting good collaborators is absolutely key. So, you know, we've, we're working very closely with ARUP and the university and the hospital here at the university, and this is helping us refine our product and move things in the right direction. The only sort of caveat with that is, as I mentioned before, you need to talk to a lot of people in the market. It's very easy to have one collaborator and understand exactly what it is that your one collaborator wants your tool to do, but if that's not what the market as a whole wants your tool to do, you've kind of painted yourself into a corner by solving a problem for an individual customer. So it makes good sense to really understand the market, make a lot of contacts. Um, and then finally, legal advice. I've just put that down at the bottom just because we had some problems trying to be cheap and uh, it doesn't work out. So sometimes you have to make sure you get the right people and get the right help. And so with that, I think I'm being told I'm out of time, <laughs> so.